Okay, so um, good day. Um, I'm Emmanuel Silva and I am your teacher for today. And our lesson will be about watercolor painting. And our topic in, in our watercolor painting would be about painting um, nebulous skies and aurora skies. So for this specific demonstration, I'll be teaching you how to paint an aurora uh, bride, uh, bride list and we need to have um, some materials in order for us to do the painting so right now i have here with me is um, 11 oh no i'm sorry it's a 14 10 by 14 inch watercolor paper this is um, a baohong watercolor paper uh, 180 gsm so this is quite thin and light but i would prefer if you have an arch watercolor paper 300 GSM variant and cut to the same size. So this is about one-fourth of a whole sheet of watercolor paper. That is um, 22 by 30. So this is about one-fourth of that. And I had applied about a one centimeter margin to all sides. Uh, I just want to, to see um, that the corners have been lined with a margin. And that is exactly when I have to mount the paper into the board. Now the board we have with me right now is made of a marine class plywood. This is about a half thick and I have primed it with a lacquer coating. And I prepared this one because this is the board that I use when I do watercolor painting for this size. Now it is important for you to have a board that is um, bigger than your paper because you need to mount it on this board with a two inch probably two inch or one and a half inch long masking tape so I'm going to mount this one to the board with this masking tape now some of you might have been painting watercolor for some time now and know some stretching techniques like using a gum uh, paper tape to mount the watercolor paper and you have to wet the paper and mount it on the board and let it dry and then we can begin the painting but right now I'm going to introduce you to a different process that I used to do watercolor painting that is um, saturated wet on wet painting technique now it's okay if you do not want to do this one because this is probably a bit more difficult for you if you do this alone or you be who are used to doing watercolor paintings that have already been mounted on and prepared with the board but for this specific lesson we need to extend the drying time of our watercolor painting especially if we want to paint a wet into wet painting and that is exactly what we need to do so that we can um, make a smooth transition of colors when we're playing with the paint on the paper and the longer the possibility to blend the colors the better and that will be only um, achievable if we control the wetness of the paper if we can make the paper at least a little bit longer than usual and for that to happen we need to wet the paper from the front to the back now you might be wondering how do we do that when we mount the paper that's exactly what we need right now um, a masking tape we can detach it from the board if we use a masking tape and the problem is if you mount the board on um, say the water activated gum tape it will, it will be impossible for you to mount or demount it from the back of your uh, or in your board I mean um so what i've been using is this one and i'll be mounting it with the scotch tape so that's what i'm going to do right now so i'm basically going to get a long strip of the masking tape and mount it on the board so let's just see if i put it in centered correctly now i'll be um, following the margins that i have drawn before as a guide to this particular watercolor paper. So I need to make this one straight as possible. There. So we need to 
cut it. We need to make sure that when we cut this one, we have an excess into the side of more than its width. The reason for that is you need to have a cross. They have to overlap. The tips, the masking tip that we're going to apply needs to overlap against each other. And if you cut it too short, you will have problems later and you would know. And I'm going to discuss that. We need to make sure that the masking tape adheres firmly to the paper. The reason is, when we put a lot of water and paint wet into wet, the colors would bleed to the margins and that one won't look as nice if we can make a straight masked edge that isn't painted. So that's what we're going to make sure that the masking tape is adhere uh, is a, is a, um, fixed to the paper firmly and we can do that by applying pressure to the corners as I put the masking tape on it okay so we're almost done with the first part Masking, so there's a last one remaining. Okay, so this is the last one. Just making sure that it's firmly attached to the paper. going to cut it. Now it's okay if the, the masking tape is not that um, attached to the board but you have to make sure that it is firmly sticking to the paper. Um, uh, I'm going to discuss what we're going to do. So first I'm going to just introduce the materials that we'll be needing for this painting. So I have with me right now um, three kinds of brushes so this one is made of goat hair this one is from rosemary this is some pretty cheap brush because this one is made of goat hairs but this is a flat brush and this is very useful when you're applying loads and washes of paint say water and then paint to the entire painting this is because this is fast this is wide and this is about one and a half inch I also have about an inch that's also good and you can also find brushes like this one this is a cheap um, goat hair brush this is a hockey brush they call this one uh, goat hair and what I use with this one is this is just the same with this one but this one just been bleached so that this is wider and I also use this one to apply paint to the entire painting so I have flat brushes and I also have some angular brushes also from Kalish. This one is from Kalish. This is about an inch angular and it's a Kolinsky sable. So I also have a 3 8 Also have about 5 8 and about a 3 4 brush. Now, uh, you might be wondering um, if you don't have these brushes, you could also use flat brushes sable brushes it doesn't not matter if you're using a sable or a kolinska sable as long as it, is it, it that it is a flat brush like this one the only advantage that we have with the flat, flat brushes or i mean the angular brushes versus the flat brushes is that you can also use the point when you're painting like that but pretty much the stroke is the same so you can use a flat brush and an angular brush it doesn't matter so if you have varying sizes various sizes of this one it will work and I also have a um, uh, the designer series brush from Raphael this is Kolinsky number six any round brush will do as long as it points firmly with a with a tip or an edge needle point edge so that'll be fine for some details in the um, last process part painting and of course you have the towels 
kitchen towels to dry your brush and remove paint. Now, I also have a used brush here. It doesn't look very much used because um, uh, there are other brushes that I, I change brush, toothbrush frequently. So, we need a toothbrush for applying a masking fluid later. We're going to show that to you in the process. We need at least a good used brush that you're not gonna use again or anything close to that. Next is the paints that I'm going to use. So, um, I have with me an ultramarine from M. Graham, burnt umber from Daniel Smith, and I also have a kinacridone violet from M. Graham. You can use other brands if you want. And in blue from Daniel Smith, also enhanced a yellow medium from Daniel Smith, and from Sinele, I have this purple Helios or if you have other brands this is a Kinacridon Magenta from Daniel Smith and also um, Windsor Newton so if you have this one it's okay we need this use for use of colors or this paint for the Aurora and that's what, what we need to achieve those colors for the sky so we need those colors you can have dark blues like an Indantron blue this one is from Daniel Smith and we can use this one to deepen the color of the sky so um, if you have a if you don't have a tail of blue you can have an Indentron blue but it's pretty much good if you have a tail of blue and an ultramarine blue now we any of the two will do but it's better if you have an ultramarine rather than this one because the ultramarine has or makes an excellent mix with a magenta color to create a purple or purplish sky for a night the night look of the sky um, that is better because this one is a bit greenish if you mix this one but this will also work if you mix this one with the Hansa yellow so it makes about a greenish cast so if you're imagining the Aurora uh, in the sky you seldom see them in a hue of green so if you have this one a tint for the sky it's gonna work with this one so I'm going to teach you how to achieve that and just don't be too excited because I'm going to do some drawings first for the painting so um, we also need a masking fluid you might be wondering what do we need it for well we need to make some um, stars that looks natural into the night sky so um, we need to um, apply masking for that one and we're going to sprinkle the masking using this brush, the toothbrush. And we have to apply that one into a separate mixing well. So what we're going to do for that one is going to add this one here and then sprinkle it. But before we do that, we have to do some drawings first. So I'm going to start with a bit of drawing in our paper. And first, okay, let me zoom in closer so that we can see what I'm going to do. And I'm going to align my board here with the paper. Okay, so there it is. A little bit on the top. And I'm going to draw a line to show the horizon. So what I want to do is I want a mountain here, some, some, some mountain here as well, snowy mountain tops, and so perhaps a river here, and then some eastern trees, trees here, and then the sky we need to make the sky bigger so let's see if we can have about if you can imagine about having two lines going here um, cutting it into three pieces so perhaps we can start here in this part with the line for the horizon so I'm going to have a horizon here it doesn't have to be too straight Okay, so now we have a line. We're gonna have some, say, shape of the mountain, mountain shapes, like this one. We don't need to have too much detail first with the drawing because this is basically um, anything that goes with it. Um, nobody's gonna notice. We're just going to use our imagination to make some drawings with this one. So, for example, there's a line going there. 
and distant mountains there. Okay, some lines like that. I'm going to draw some mountain range. Okay, not all mountains are the same, so they won't even notice if you make this one. Alright, so I want a river here, going here, a bit like that, and some curve, I like that, okay, some snowy segments, so this one is going to be a water. We don't need to draw the, some foliage of trees here, just going to have some lines drawn here so that we can impress that there is a line here going here or some pines. Those are evergreens for some foliage to follow. Okay, so that pretty much sums up our drawing for this one. And what we're going to do next is we're going to prepare now the masking fluid on this one, separate mixing well. Uh, this one is a ceramic plate, so this is a sauce dish. <clears throat> but first we need to have some water, or you can add some water. Um, okay, just give me a brush here. I forgot, I also have with me a flat squirrel brush. This is very useful. This is also from Raphael. We call this one the Mauritius and this one is a series 916. It is a flat squirrel brush. It's very good for lifting paints because squirrel brush is known to suck in water when it's thirsty wet from the paper and that works wonders when you want to pick up paint from your paper. So I'm going to um, put some water here, just a small amount, so that the paint, or the masking fluid, I mean, won't be too thick to apply to our um, paper. We need some fluid mask to do that, so just a small amount of water here, not too much, because you only need a small amount for some parts there in the sky. So. going to pour the masking fluid. This one is from Schmink. Schminka. It says a tinted masking fluid. You can buy ones from other um, brands. Um, there are various brands that offer this one. But I love this, the consistency of this one because this one doesn't uh, do much damage to the paper unlike other brands in my experience. So I would definitely recommend the Schmincke brand over the others. The next thing that you need to know is that masking fluids dry as a rubber latex. And when they are dry, the problem is your brushes that get so with it will suffer. So if you're going to ever use a masking fluid, do use a brush that you don't want or you um, can throw away but you can also save the brush when you're using it by applying soap to the bristles or the tuft of the hair so that it won't adhere too much to the brush so you need to soak it to the paper you can also use hair conditioner and then you can apply the masking with with that with that brush so I'm going to steer it so that the consistency will be even will mix with the water so that it's fluid, a bit more fluid than usual. Okay, so that's it. That's all we need. And now I'm going to um, soak this one here to get a good amount of the mask. And I'm going to tilt the board slightly, so I'm going to show it to you, I'm just going to zoom out how it's done, because just like what you see, there's a droplet of mask, and that's a bit dangerous, so 
we don't want big drops to happen with our board and thankfully it's not in our paper yet it's just in the board so what I'm going to do is going to sprinkle that using holding it into a slightly angled degree so I'm going to sprinkle it like this you don't need a lot of it just have to be you just have to have randomness of the splatters in the sky and then we're gonna let it dry after that the reason we're sprinkling the masking fluid is it's that it's it will look more natural than if you um, use your hand to painstakingly paint each spot with white paint rather than use a mask because there will be randomness in the, in the spots the spot will be random and the sizes will also be random so the randomness is the most important part when you want to try to paint a night sky with stars and that can only happen if you use masking fluid and sprinkle it this way because if you try to hand paint each position of the stars the tendency of the hand is to um, paint in equal some there's a tendency for it to paint in equal distances or there, there'll be a, a very um, distinguishable pattern with your hand painted stars so randomness is the key to make it more convincing and with the mask right now we're just going to let it dry or you can speed up the process using a hair dryer by the way you need to rinse this one with water as soon as the masking starts to dry and when it's become a fix with this brush you won't be able to use this one again so you need to soak this one in water and clean the rest okay I'll be right back let's have a break So what I did is, um, what we did was um, wait for masking fluid to dry and um, you can use a uh, hair dryer to speed up the process or you can wait for it to dry. So just to make sure that it is dry, you need to touch it and it's not sticky, it's not um, coming off with a slight touch from your paper that's how you test it and of course um, one of the key um, ways to make sure that your masking fluid is dry is for you to wait for a significant time or use a hair dryer and by visually seeing it that there's um, it's not actually runny if there's it's a thick one um, this one of indicators that it's already become a rubber um, what I'm going to do with this masking the sprinkle of masking in the sky is we need to make sure that there's not an odd shape spot there of a mask that's gonna become um, something like an odd one when you take a look good look at it so I'm just going to show you the masks from that were that we sprinkled so there's an odd shape one right there that's like um, that's a bit, a bit elongated because when we sprinkled then it got splattered like that and the shape took its shape um, we can remove that one with our finger so that we don't have that with our final work or with our finished painting same with this one you see that one it's going to show it to you a bit closer we need to remove those um, big and and elongated pieces so that it would just look like a um, random shape and some big one like that just a bit like an odd elliptical shape um, we, we're not gonna need all of them actually we just have to make sure that none of them stays with our paper or in the final painting an odd one that's kind of like just going to give along how how we did the stars how we sprinkled it it's going to make sure that those things don't 
or what I mean is the stars would look convincing so we don't have to give one that's an odd shape or an odd um, size with the rest of the work so okay so pretty much solves it doesn't look too much uh, of a bit of a problem anymore with the rest of the painting now um, we're gonna start with we're gonna um, wet the paper now and I told you before that we need to make sure that the paper stays long as possible while we do the wet into wet painting and for that to happen we need to make sure that it's saturated with water and one of the key factors to do that is if we can wet the back of the paper the paper stays wet longer and for that we have our masking tape we did not fix it to the board with the gum tape because we cannot unmount that one unless it's finished so I'm going to integrate the process of wetting the back of the paper now a lot of other people have been doing this stuff um, you might not just be familiar but a lot of um, Eastern style painters use this method to make sure that their paper stays wet longer so I'm just going to zoom out so you can see my entire board and my area when I'm doing the thing so I'm going to zoom out I'm going to show you my board and my paper now the reason that I cut the tape and uh, there's some excess in the shape or in the masking tape is we need to pull it off from the board and flip it over so that we can wet the back of the paper the ones underneath the mask or the masking tape since the one that overlaps we can easily pull it off and we also need the one from under it to support the other ones as we unmount it from our board so that's why I needed it to overlap on its sides but be rather difficult if you cut it exactly now if this is not a problem if your masking tape is also kind of long but I, that's why I needed about one and a half size of a masking tape two inch could be better if the paper is a bit bigger but this one is just enough for this one so now we have the back this is the back of the paper what we need to do with this one is of course we need to apply moisture or water and I need a flat brush to do that a big broad flat brush synthetics will do for this job it's not that too sensitive and if you're using a good paper it won't matter if you because we're not gonna paint this one this back of it just need some water so what's gonna happen is um, the paper's gonna become saturated with water it's gonna stretch a little bit it's gonna be some waving and that's pretty much all right at this point of the or on this part of the painting okay so it's going to work silently and apply water and moisten the back of the paper We need to make sure that we apply water evenly so that all the sides of the paper will get soaked and it's gonna expand on all sides so if you're new you're new to this method or method of painting you'll be amazed at how how we can achieve what we can achieve with the wet into wet painting it dramatically increases the working time with your paper with your paint on the paper and not just some wet into wet painting but of course when you're also applying a wet wash with a brush because what actually happens is the water that's in the back will try to move up towards the surface of the one that we're painting and it replaces the moisture that is lost and the result is it stays longer that way so just going to give it a little bit more just wait for it to expand 
Now you can see that it's already buckled because it's already uh, it, it is expanding. So that's what's happening. Now I'm going to flip it over to the other side and show you the surface. This one, the, the one we're going to paint. So you can see the masking there, masking fluid. Just going to mount it back. Now, so, now as I uh, fix it up again in the board, I need to add more water because the board is going to stick. And the great thing about this board is I have made this one flat and this can retain moisture, a lot of warm water in the back. And when it's impermeable to water, it's going to stay in the back of your paper and there's no way but up to the surface so your paper will stay longer. So um, That's a, one of the most important thing when you want a board that, you, that can handle this kind of particular technique, handle this particular technique. Alright, so just going to pull on all sides, make sure that it stays flat like that. Later in the part of our process, it might um, stretch up a bit and that's okay we can always pull into the sides to make sure that um, we can manage the waving or the buckling of the paper so we're just going to make sure that it lays flat on the surface like that okay all right so we got it back and now if you can touch your paper, you will feel that it's a bit cold and some moisture. You can feel it's actually um, damp. So that's the effect of the wetting the back of the paper. Now, we're gonna paint first for our painting, the sky and its reflection to the river, the waters. So we need to wet that, kind, that, that part of the sky first and also here. Now we have also to prepare our paints with us. And what I'm gonna need to do is gonna need this. I'm going to pour this one out of the pan here. Need some Hansa yellow. If you don't have a Hansa yellow, you can have any strong yellow color, medium yellow color that's gonna blend with other colors like um, magenta. This is magenta. I'm also going to pour out put it over here you can see I only have two colors with me right now and that's basically what we need first here with our painting we don't need a lot other paints for now because we're gonna plan the steps that we need to do with this painting doing watercolor is like a bit of problem solving or puzzle solving you need to find ways on how you can paint your watercolor in a much better step for us to achieve a, a much desired outcome with our work. And for this one, we're gonna paint first the underlying colors, the colors underneath with this one. These are the lighter colors. So we always start painting watercolor from light to dark. That means is lighter colors that should not be stained or needs um, to stay clean should be the first one that goes with the paper and it's hard to apply colors such as yellow and a magenta if there's a color of like a blue or a black pigment already there they're not gonna show through because it's gonna become um, tinted with uh, strong colors that's gonna make it look dark and muddy we have to put the lighter colors first with our watercolor and we have to keep that in mind when we're using colors that are especially transparent in nature like enhanced yellow and a magenta this is a kinacrylum magenta and you can also use other brands but I have with me Right now is a Cinele, and I like this color because this one is um, the particular hue of Cinele is um, a bit more cool than the other one. So I like this one. It leans towards the purplish hue. So 
I kind of, you know, chose that color, particular color from that brand because of that property. Anyway, um, we're gonna start now wetting the part of the sky where the aurora is and also in the river. So I'm going to show and then I'm going to zoom in to show you the paper that I'm working on. Okay, so we're gonna put some water first. What's gonna happen is going there will be some buckling of the paper and that's pretty much normal because we haven't stretched the paper to its maximum um, wet uh, condition because only the back is saturated with water. Now if we equally apply water or moisture from the top and also in the, the surface, I mean the surface and the back of the paper, it's gonna expand a bit more so it's going to buckle but that's okay you can see here that I'm avoiding the drawings that I did I'm avoiding to put water there I'm isolating that part so I'm just painting the sky with water it's clean moist water and I'm avoiding on painting water or putting water on the mountains the reason for that is watercolor tends to to um, scatter to the part of your painting where there is moisture and as long as you don't apply moisture to the other parts washes or paint will stay on the area where there is water so you can see this and I'm going to apply water of course also in the river because I'm going to try to paint the reflection of the aurora there in the water just of course, just the same with the, uh, the sky, only have to make sure that the water, or I mean the river is the one with the water. Okay. Alright, seems that um, it's all good. There's a, there's a small amount of... Um, the, the water is a bit expanding, the, I mean the paper, but it's not that much and nothing that you can actually notice at the moment. So, going back to my palette, I have with me the, or, the yellow, I mean, and the magenta. So I need first the yellow color. Just going to add a bit of color, or of water, I mean, to um, melt the colors with it. And then I'm going to apply it with a flat brush or an angular brush sorry if you have a flat brush that's okay now I'm going to paint in a such a way that each stroke would be like the shape of an aurora it's just random I mean you don't have to follow any particular shape just to have to make it wobbly and you know some lines some looks like an intestine sometimes the shape so that's what I'm gonna do you don't have to have a particular shape with it at this point because you know the aurora is also changing as you can see it's pretty much blending with everything in the paper because it's wet it's going to do that here and then receding into the distance like that there's nothing it's not much so this one is um, the aurora again the yellow part Okay, so for that one, we need the reflection to the bottom of the paper, or I mean the river. We, it won't be noticeable because you don't need to make it look exactly as the one that's in the top. Nobody's gonna notice that, so you just have to try to paint the colors there. Like how it mirrors with the one in the sky. But trust me, nobody's gonna notice it if it's very much similar since you know this one is uh, the other one is much smaller than the one in the top you don't have to think too much about it 
don't overthink it. Just be confident with each stroke of color that you give. And that pretty much will solve the problem for you. Water will just blend the colors. Okay, so we have now a pattern of the colors. The next part that we're going to apply is the magenta. Same here. Magenta is quite nice if you pair it with the yellow actually. It makes a tan so the colors won't be that much, you know, kind of dirty. And that pretty much is the reason why we chose this one in the first place. Now, so I'm going to apply colors here in this part of the sky so that it doesn't blend too much. Sometimes we also see some kind of parts in our aurora that's a bit like a magenta. As long as the part still remains like that. And like that. Some part have a bit of magenta colors. And that's okay. No, no, that one looks a bit of red because they're mixing now, but that's okay. think too much about it it's pretty much all right now I'm painting on the upper part of the aurora there that's because sometimes you can see bands of colors like a rainbow it's a bit a bit a bit of separation between the colors you can see so that's what I'm gonna do right now Okay, so the bottom, the bottom part, we're just going to add a bit of that here in this section. Now, if you want to, you can have more blend with the colors. I mean, you can blend the colors further by tilting the board and letting the water do its job. So, you can do that. So, that it looks natural, the angle. I'm tilting the board right now so the colors will flow like that. And that will look more convincing to the eye of the one who's seeing it. We're gonna do are gonna use the action of gravity to blend the colors as smoothly as possible. Okay, so I'm going to boost the colors again in here in this part. So because I'm losing some colors there. For this part, we can accelerate the blending by using a dry, dry one. So I'm just going to stroke this one down to blend a bit more. There, that's it. Also in this part, okay, that pretty much solves the problem with that one. And some parts, of course, you can also do the same, but not too much. Just a slight touch. It should be dry, so that it won't pick up the paint when you do it. Just making sure that uh, the lines that it's being made is kind of straight. It's kind of awkward if they're in a different direction than the flow of the, of the water. Or I mean, yeah, it should all fall down one direction. If it's here, straight down, all paint should should appear like that so um that's what i'm doing i'm fanning out the brush or i mean the paint too much of that there all right 
Okay, so we need to wait for this one to settle in and to dry a bit further. You can see it's still wet. It's going to take a long while. You can actually use a hair dryer again to speed up the process. But that will do there'll be a little help cuz the back is wet. So we're just going to wait for this one to dry. Um since this one is a recorded one and this is not a live one demonstration, I can wait for that to dry so that I could uh, have a better um say uh, output with this particular piece so that's what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna wait for it to dry and I'm gonna come back when everything's settled in the paper okay so um, see you in a while and I'll be back again with the next part of the painting process okay so we're back with our work and our painting and as you can see it's dry and I waited for it to dry um, it just took about uh, less than an hour for it to dry and the paper started also to you know from its back to become dry as well and that means that we need also to check again if we can extend the drying type of our work by wetting the back of the paper now, I, now you know this is a very uh, tedious process but the results are rewarding because we can control drying time of our washes in our wet into wet painting and that's what in, what is important the output is much more important the process may look a bit more difficult at first but once you get a hang of it you will enjoy the results so right now you can see that the paper is dry and the paint the light colors the yellow and the magenta are fixed in the paper um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wet again the paper I'm gonna check it out I'm going to show you again the process from the start so I'm going to show you again my board and everything that I have with me in the table so what I'm gonna do now is flip again check the sides of the paper see if it's the back is still wet and put some more moisture if we need more water I'm gonna flip it back I'm not gonna take it off just like the first one I'm just gonna check the water or the back and apply some moisture with it and see if... okay so it's a bit dry now and there's not much water because it has evaporated or yeah probably because of the time that we waited for it to dry <clears throat> gonna wet again the sides the back the paper can actually flip it again but I don't mind doing this time a shortcut it's gonna apply water not much not too much just enough for it to be wet since we're gonna work again with the paper with the mounting with the wet on wet painting process let's do <clears throat> so um With every painting of watercolor, uh, you can in actually improve your skill. You will be able to develop if you put into practice every day. Uh, you will discover new ways in doing things. But sometimes it will be, it will take a long while for you to discover something that works for you, and you will also learn which don't work things that don't work in watercolor so I'm actually saving you the trouble of all the mistakes and the miseries that goes with the experimentation to show you some things that I learned that maybe you will be able to adopt to your painting to your process so I learned this one from watching others how to paint watercolor and I did this one as a piece of my own and I'm passing on to you you may develop other things from this one and that is okay if you <coughs> um, share it as well with the others that's fine with me you don't need to give me credit <laughs> because I also learned this one from the other watercolor painting masters so that's alright okay 
so now I have applied water again to the back of the paper to make sure that our wash or paint in this one would stay long wet for long okay I'm fixing it again on the board now it's dry and okay I'm just going to align this one and I'm going to start again with the next process in our step in our work so what makes the next work um, seem is that we're just going to wet again the paper top and the river with water so we need a brush uh, the large angular brush or the flat brush if you have so this one I'm going to wet this part and we need a, a different color this time we need the tail sign in color the green the tail sign in blue I mean or and the ultramarine you can see you can apply water but it's already fixed to the paper and it won't move or it won't budge despite wetting the surface so that's why we needed to wet I mean we needed to make sure that it's dry before we wet again the paper so when the water will dries in the paper with the paint with it what happens is fixes the paint makes it permanent so you only have time until the water is thoroughly dry for you to ascertain that that's what you want because as long as uh, as soon as it is the water is gone the paper begins to fix the paint and its surface so again I'm using a Baohong 185 GSM paper this one is a cold pressed paper but this one is slightly smoother than the other ones that I have tried and you can also use arch paper that one is really good but a bit more expensive okay you can see that I have wet again the surface of the paper and only the parts that I needed to apply paint I did not wet the portion of the mountains and also this one we need to make sure that only the paint, the sky, and the water gets the paint that we need. So, again, the colors that I'm gonna need is the uh, pale blue from Daniel Smith. It's okay if you have other brands, that's fine. And if you also have um, the color from like Ultramarine, you can also make use of that one. But I prefer to use a mix of that so I'm going to mix colors from ultramarine and tail signing blue for the sky the night sky we need to make sure that the sky is a bit dull so we're gonna mute the colors down the blue so this one is the ultramarine and then the tail sign in blue or tail sign in blue sorry <clears throat> it's cause um, we need water to thin it down the paint like that you can, you can see that this one is really beautiful the color is a bit greenish and the other one is um, more on the warm side and whichever works for you but you can also mix them but also do note that the tailor sign in blue is a transparent color and if you want a skin like the the sky smooth colors transparent colors are the best like skin um, when if you want some textures you can try some granulate you can see it's actually starting to granulate the ultramarine so the yellow sign in blue is transparent and it's smooth and the other one have a bit of grain to it when you apply it as a paint warm paint as a, as a wash Okay, so what I'm gonna apply is the paint in, again in this part of the sky where there is um, color. So I'm gonna apply this one, the tail sign blue. And what's gonna happen is I'm just gonna cover some part that's no paint, that's no paint with it. It's not gonna blend with the rest because you actually isolated some parts. there you don't actually need to you know paint all of it 
just going to leave some part where there's a lot. Just no um, color. So there's gonna be some blending. You can see that the yellow color is um, pulling through. It's creating a, green, a cast of green with the night sky. So the aurora is something like that. It's actually nice when you think of it. Kind of greenish cast. Now I'm applying the mixture of the paint. But if you want to use ultramarine, you can do so. You don't have too much problem with this one. So gonna apply a bit strong color ultramarine may be good in the corners of the painting because you know some of the when you look at an image of a painting sometimes there's some vignetting and colors do appear darker in the corners of pictures with a vignette so I can apply ultramarine to darken that part a bit more some part of it like this one let the paint do its thing it's blend you can try avoiding some parts and while this one is wet it's safe to correct some parts of the painting that you don't want or you probably are not content okay so that's it that part, some lighting, some colors, some strong colors there. Now we're gonna work in the bottom part as well. I'm gonna put some colors there with the blue. Okay, so we can apply ultramarine if we want to. So here, it's a blend. Okay, so it's beginning to dry. We need some water to ease that flow of paint there. Need to some wet brush and water there. Like I told you, they won't notice if it's not identical to the top, this, this part of the painting. You're not gonna fully look at it anyway. It's okay. some blending of colors there from here from there to their side and still still workable still wet with paint and water now here's the exciting part because the paint is um, still wet and or um, it's not yet fixed. It stays a bit longer than usual because the back it has water, it has moisture. It retains this condition for a bit longer than usual. We can do some editing techniques for this one. So remember again I told you that I like this brush because this one is a squirrel brush. You just have to rinse this one and make sure that it's wet and moist. And this one does wonders. I use this one for lifting techniques. Um, like this one. We can lift the paint that has gone on the top of this one to create some astounding effects. Like that one. Make sure you just dry, then lift the color with this brush. So I'm gonna um, show it to you how it's done. So you lift some colors there. 
here and there. To the shape of an aurora. You lift it up going up there with each stroke. It's pretty much how you simulate the effect. lift some highlights bottom part Now this is a problem if it begins to dry, that's why I suggest that um, you work as, um, as, as carefully as you can but also as fast as you can. But because we have, we have extended the drying time by wetting the back of the paper, it becomes even more possible to um, have further corrections and extend the drying time. We don't have to, have to worry about drying as soon as the paper. Um, we stop putting water in the paper, on the surface of the paper, because there's some moisture in the back. So we're lifting, just lifting all sides here to create this wonderful effect of the aurora. Right? In that part. Just going to apply some long strokes there. The paint. Yeah, we have to make sure that we leave the colors. Now the aurora does have some patterns, but it also follows with one some one direction. So if it goes up on the side or in the corners, you also have to follow it. This one I decided that I'm just going to make this one straight as possible. So sometimes it's a bit slanted. It depends upon you on how you're going to make your um, painting work. We're all going to have a unique creation at the end anyway. The goal is not to become same as the one that we are doing right now, but to have a convincing effect of, on our work. Uh, it, it looks a, b a bit more natural, or at least as natural as possible to the eye. Because we know it, this is a painting. So I'm going to have lift, I'm going to lift further here in this side, in the corner. Brush. A bit more in that part.
Okay, so we're going to have more lifting here to increase the highlights, the light colors. You can see that's the initial layers that we put is shining through or pulling through the layers of colors, that we, the, the blue that we applied. Now in this part we also have to at least give it a bit of lifting to show Okay, so um, some parts, I'm not yet quite happy with some parts of the colors or the laid out colors here. So I'm going to add a bit, a bit more blue. I'm going to leave some paints here. Okay, so I'm just going to apply a bit more blue to make some simple separations here. better don't put too much water because the paper is still wet you need just about as much water as you can with the brush but not too much not not more than the water or how not much wet than the surface of the paper because if it's too much water it's going to bleed all over and it's going to disturb the paint to sharpen some edges by applying paint again and then doing some cornerings some stuff
Okay, so same same with this one, the bottom part, the reflection. We're going to sharpen some edges. Not not too sharp. I mean, going to have some definition. Once you're happy with it, just wait for it to dry again. Okay, so I think I'm having enough for the Aurora, the designs. I'm quite happy with it. I don't I don't wish to disturb this one until it's dry. So we're gonna wait again or if you want to, you can use a hair dryer to speed up the entire process. So it doesn't matter um, which one you do, just be careful and don't overdo your work. So uh, I'll be back when this one is dry and we're gonna proceed with the last and final step of this watercolor painting. Until then, um, be careful with your work and see you on the next round. Okay, so going back to our painting and this is the final step of our work with the Aurora painting, the Aurora night sky painting. What we need to do next is um, paint the rest of the image, the one that you see that's white. Um, we're gonna add some details and this will be the most exciting part because we've already seen the, um, the sky, the water, and um, you only need a bit about of mixing colors because um, pretty much everything is set for the color. The, the ones that we have in focus, which is the one in the sky and in the reflection in the water. Um, we don't need to wet again the paper, the back of the paper, because we're not gonna play with the wet into wet painting. What we're gonna do is we're just going to adjust the overall look of the whole image. But what I mean is, this is still white of the paper, and as we all know, white should not be the widest part not as wide as this one because this one is the setting is like it is a night sky so we have to tone this down a bit in a gray and for that we need to mix colors neutral colors so i told you before that i have uh, some colors with me like the indian drone blue from daniel smith and of course also the ultramarine blue from Anne graham whatever brand you have if you have these colors um any of the two will do so you also need some earth brown color like the burnt umber this is a brown color it's like more of a coffee and when you mix an earth color an earth brown color with a strong um blue we're going to have a neutral. It's just going to neutralize each other. That's the complementary colors. Mixing neutrals from opposite colors in the spectrum. So when you mix this one or either of the Indian Tone Blue, we're going to have some neutral colors, gray colors we can use for this one. But you might ask, why don't we use an ivory black or um, say a paints gray? Well, they can work, but for, as for me, I would like to mix my own neutrals because I can take control of the colors that it's going to be, it's going to come out from the mixture. I mean, you can shift the color a bit more towards the dark or really, really neutral side. Uh, you can also make it lean towards blue if you want to by varying the mixtures, whichever works for you. That you ha I have no objection. It's just that I want to mix my neutrals with this one, and for me, I have more control, a bit more control with the mix that I have when I use these two colors. So 
that's one that's what I'm gonna do right now I'm going to mix my neutrals from these two colors so I'm going to use a burnt umber and an ultramarine blue so if you also have an Indian Tron blue that is also okay so I also I already poured in a bit of ultramarine blue in the last one so I'm just going to add a burnt umber color to mix to make a neutral one I'm going to show you again the mixture I'm going to show you I'm going to use a brush flat brush for this one so this is my palette I'm going to mix with an ultra ultramarine blue you can see that the mixture produces some gray colors it's a neutral why can't we use the tail sign in blue well the reason is that one is a bit some bit of green cast in it so if you mix it for example a bit of that with the old the you can see it's green it's not making a true neutral there's some green cast of color unlike with the one that's warm the warmer blue the one towards the warm side it actually has a, an excellent color gray gray mixed color so I'm going to add a bit more water to tone it down not too much not not too strong not too dark just going to neutralize the white part of the paint so okay I'm going to begin again by wash putting a bit of water with the wash and I'm going to neutralize that part just going to do some quick strokes you can see that I have a bit of mixture of more in towards the blue side for this one that's why it's a bit the gray the neutral color is leaning towards the bluish side of things have no problem with that one just going to apply colors also with the mountains in the distance not a problem with that okay now we what we've done is we already had applied color we, so um, it appears gray now it's not that white um, in this part I see that there's gonna be some reflection of trees here so what I'm gonna do is going to wet this part with water with moist brush the part of this part of the river I'm going to do some reflections again so I'm going to um, apply water clean water in this side and I'm going to mix that those two now this is where this one comes in handy the the round brush so when you wet that that part it becomes pointed now we need to mix again the colors the ultramarine with the burnt umber and as you can see the less water you have the stronger the mix the more concentrated it is the darker it is now that's what we need for this to work we're going to have some smooth reflections of those trees you don't have to bother yourself with all the, all of the how accurate it is it's okay so we start with a quick stroke down like that it's going to spread it's gonna be like that so it's gonna be some reflection of the trees there so we only have to you know make sure that the mirror the image that it mirrors is quite 
um, similar with the one we have in the, in the water. I'm going to do some adjustments with that towards the end of our work. Oops. Wasn't what I'm expecting. So anyway, let's just continue with the reflections. Okay, not too much there. Just going to make sure that there's some reflections here. Now, as you can see, receding towards a distance, there's still supposed to be some reflections remaining. So, I'm going to add a bit of that. Now, for some of you, this might not look too nice because there's some smooth overlapping colors there and this side what we can do is lift it we can lift with again this brush make sure this one is um, clean moist and we can lift the excess paint from that corner okay so we have our edge back the bleeds are gone then we can um, continue on with some summer lines. Okay, so what do we do next? How about the one in the floor, the, the, this part, like in the horizon? There's going to be some trees. There's going to be like that. We can't avoid that. So I'm going to make some line, dark line there. I know there's gonna be some um, pines there. I'm going to add some lines. The paint should be thick and concentrated because this one is still wet. That's why we need. More paint, less water. Also, same here. It's gonna be some part. Now for this one, we can actually speed up the drying process by using a hair dryer. If we are already contented with some of the parts here, because everything is going to be very smooth if we don't dry it. Just going to have some more of the trees there. Some logs here. Some major ones. We see as a reflection. So what happens is because this one is uh, wet, reflection spread is also going to spread like that now we can actually speed that up we're going to use a hair dryer I'm just going to get my hair dry and I'll be back <clears throat> okay so I have my hair dry with me just have to you know not not just have to remove some moisture not to make sure it's too dry okay let me test it 
sure if that work just going to put my hair dryer aside see if everything goes still too much moisture still need more more time to let it dry so. Okay, let's see again. Going to see. Okay, I think that's good enough. Now you can add some details without, you know, having problems. Things will get defined because of this one. Going to be some sharp lines. Unlike the first one, which is smooth, but that's okay because we need some details here. Also, some lines and contrast for our work. We need some straight lines for the trees. We need that one. For the branches. Let's take some winter. Okay, some, some foliage will be in the ground, so I'm going to have some lines going here. It's not seen. You can't probably make out because it's dark, so there's going to be some foliage there's gotta be something like that I'm going to add more and then same okay so the last part is the mountains some, there will be some jack corners and mountain tops and we need also to show that one what we need is it's still the same mixture but we have to reduce the water not too much water um, with a brush and there's gonna be some quick lines to do that so just going to imagine that there's some line going here quick lines strokes like that best is not to overdo it This is a mountain range. Right. And steer in this part. And there it is. This one receding in the distance. Also in this part. This can be uh, it's gonna be some quick brush strokes not not too much paint and your brush should be you know smooth enough because if it's too stiff the bright the lines is going to you know come together it won't break apart you have to make it as light as possible Okay, so I'm going to add more in the receding distance and I'm going to have 
uh, some dark lines in the edge of the water because snow is like that there are parts that are soaked in water appears darker than something that you can stand or the one that's in on land so we need a smaller brush or any brush that you, that you have with you flat one so I'm going to use a small one like this and I still have to mix that one but not as dark as the one that I used for the foliage or the trees so add more water it's going to make this one darker the one in the edge of the water there yep that's how it's going to appear also this one get I get it's too much this one's here and something like that Okay, so going to make this one a bit more dense and I'm going to straighten this one up on the horizon I'm just going to apply more color here you can see that I'm not using too much water here to make this one a bit dark like a bit more dense some forest quick brush strokes you have to make this one taller it doesn't make sense it has to be bigger so I'm going to do that so this one for the palm I mean the pines Okay, I guess I'm happy with that. Some more reflections there with the water. Just going to improve that one. Just a bit more. Quick strokes going down. Right. Okay. Um, well, <laughs> I'm happy with this one, how it turned out. So I'm going to wait a bit more. Maybe we can use a hair dryer again to speed up the process since we're already on the last part of our painting. Let's let's do let's do that just that, okay? Okay, so it's dry and now for the part the magical part of this entire thing the masking fluid now you can remove this one with your thumb or you can use an eraser make sure this one is dry and if you have a rubber pickup mask that's a bit of a rubber 
uh, it's a latex rubber square piece of latex rubber you can rub this one off but for this one we don't need that one since the the, the masking fluid is thin it's just small bits we can use our thumb just be careful with make sure your paper is dry so I'm certain that this one is dry because I've waited for this one to dry um, and I've been uh, you know um, waiting for it as long as I can to make sure that everything in every step is done um, okay I'm going to show this one to you see in the corner when you peel it off rub with your mask you can see that there's some white spots those are supposed to be the sprinkles the stars that you were going to see see that one I put it off with my finger and bright spots will appear Okay, so you can use a brush to get it off. So just make sure that every every mask has come off. Okay, you can see now that there are some stars. I'm going to focus a bit more to show it to you how it looks like. Stars look like that. All right. Now. Um, you can leave this one on tape in the board and make sure that this one is totally dry before you dismount it but as for this one painting is it's pretty much okay um, we have done and I think I'm happy with how it looks like with with this particular work that I have with me right now what I'm seeing but I'm just going to put my name to make sure it's done. I'm going to sign it. I'm going to use my name. Sign my name. Maybe here. I actually sign my works on the left side, lower left side. And this here. The year now is 2020, the unforgettable year. Well, God knows who might be watching in what year this recording, <laughs> but 2020 is a year, certainly is a year you'd never expect. All right, so um, thank you for watching, and I hope you learned something from this demonstration that I did. And I, I do wish I could see your work. Uh, you can contact me if you uh, enrolled in one of my lessons. Um, and you're one of my friends. I'm happy to share this one with you. And for my followers, um, I could upload this one in YouTube as a future lesson. So I pre-recorded this one for those who would sign up with my workshop. And um, if you did enjoy this one, um, please share uh, your works with me, uh, share the information about my work. Again, I'm Emmanuel G. Silva, your artist. Um, they call me Eman or Manny. Manny saw my work when I was in a, used to work in a regular day job, but I pursued my uh, interest in watercolor painting and now I'm full-time. And I'm teaching everything I learned about watercolor painting. Um, Again, this is Emmanuel um, saying um, goodbye, but not farewell because we're going to see each other again on our next lesson. So see you again on our next lesson, and I hope you enjoyed this demonstration that I did for you. And see you soon again. One of my future lessons might be... Um, landscape might be still life florals who knows but i hope you enjoyed this one and you learned something see you next time bye